Hey, what's up? It's Jesko again from AcousticsInsider.com, where I teach home studio acoustic treatment techniques for audio professionals, but without all the voodoo. Does this sound familiar to you? You're just setting up a new studio, or maybe you've been working from your studio for a little while now, and you've realized that the low end is just somehow lacking. It's missing something. You're not quite sure. So you decide to go down the rabbit hole and take some measurements, maybe with Room EQ Wizard, and you realize there's a massive dip right at like 70, 80 hertz, 100 hertz, just like in the worst region, the low end. And so clearly that's what's, what the issue is. And now you're wondering, how do I fix this? How do I solve this? Is a subwoofer maybe going to help? Can you place a subwoofer in your room to move that dip? to move that null to a different spot in the room so it doesn't mess with your listening position so much. That's what I want to help you figure out today in this video. So let me destroy any hope of that happening right from the start, but we'll get into what you can do in a second. The problem obviously is that the standing wave pattern, the room modes in your room that are potentially causing that dip are purely dependent on the geometry, of, on the shape of your room. So any peaks and any nulls caused by standing waves won't change by adding a subwoofer. They'll only change if you changed the geometry of the room. And jumping into AMROC, the room mode calculator, which you've seen me use a million times, we can see how this works, right? So I've just kind of put in some arbitrary values here for the length, width, and height. You can see it calculates those particular frequencies at which the room can potentially build or create standing waves. And we can see the geometry of those standing waves down here in this little graph. And let me see if I can get that, there we go, to stay. And so that particular room mode between the front and the back of the room, for example, depends on the room shape entirely. Yeah, Adding a subwoofer in there won't change the pattern of that particular room mode. Yeah, The only way to change that is if we, for example, change the length of the room, right? And so suddenly things look different because the room shape changed. And so what typically happens if we add a subwoofer to the room, and now you can see that in this particular measurement that I took a while back uh, in a studio that I treated. Here's what happens. So this is the frequency response of just the speaker. These were Event Opals, lovely speakers. Unfortunately, they aren't sold anymore. I think you can still get them secondhand. So this was the response of just the speaker. And then we had a Focal sub available. So we kind of tried to see what happens by adding that in. And here's how the sub measured at the same position, at the listening position, once we kind of placed it in the uh, in the ideal spot, or at least in the most ideal spot from the various options that we had. And so you can see here that those room modes, those frequencies, they don't change. Yes, those nulls, those peaks, they stay in exactly the same spot. Yeah, that's because the geometry dictates the room mode pattern and the sub can only put more energy into that system, but the system itself doesn't change, the, the system of room modes, right? So unfortunately, no, you can't move nulls by placing your subwoofer in a specific spot. The sub does change how much energy is pushed into each of these room modes. So that's why we see that the, um, the balance between them is somewhat different, right? So the, the peaks are a little higher here, it's a little lower there. The dip is actually lower here, it's a little higher there. This particular dip doesn't quite happen. It's, I, I assume that would be because this dip isn't actually caused by a room mode. Yeah, I'll get to that in a second. But the point is that you can, to some extent, change how much energy is pushed into those room modes depending on where you position the sub. And actually that's a critical process when you're positioning the sub to find that spot where the energy balances out as best as possible. You basically get the most balanced fre frequency response from the sub. It's important to find that spot. 
The issue is that this isn't a particular reliable or repeatable process. So if you are experiencing a massive dip at a certain frequency, that doesn't mean that you can then reliably take care of that by getting a sub. It might help. It is worth trying to see if it helps, but it is, in my experience, so unpredictable that it's not something I recommend, for example. Now, all this assumes that the null that you're seeing, that dip is actually a room mode null, aka it is actually caused by standing waves. But that's not necessarily the case. You can have dips in the frequency response in the low end that are caused by speaker boundary interference and also by reflections. In particular, the floor reflection is something that often shows up in the lowest part of the spectrum. So if that's the case, then a subwoofer might again potentially help simply because it's not positioned in the same spot as the speaker. And so in, when we're talking about the floor reflection, that pattern, that reflection and angle isn't the same. It basically doesn't reflect energy in the same way off of the floor. And so that dip isn't caused. And if we're talking about speaker boundary interference, same concept that because the sub isn't positioned at the same spot with the same distance to the offending surface, that speaker boundary interference induced dip isn't caused. The one caveat here is that obviously that only works if the sub covers a part of the spectrum where that particular dip actually sits, right? So with a subwoofer, which is typically crossed over at like 80 Hertz, often less, then it can reduce a, an effect like that if it sits below 80 Hertz. But if you're experiencing a dip at like 100, 110, 120 Hertz, and the subwoofer is crossed over at 80 Hertz, then it's not really gonna do much because it's not playing at that high frequency. That's why your best bet, if you've got a really unbalanced low end, is still to focus on choosing your listening position properly. And that's why I keep going on about this over and over, because you really want to find that ideal spot in the room where those standing waves balance out against each other and use that as your starting point to set up your mixing position, your mixing desk and speakers. Yeah, that's the most reliable way to get a balanced low end from the start and kind of mitigate any chance of you experiencing a massive low end dip. And of course, in my opinion, the best way to do that is to use your ears. You can obviously use measurements to try a lot of different positions, but it can get very, very confusing really quickly. And it's much more efficient and much quicker to just use your ears if you know what you're looking for. And so that's why I developed the Base Hunter technique, which you can download for free at the link in the description. This is my guide that walks you through that process of isolating the room mode problem and then figuring out what your best options are for your listening position, right? So again, you can download that at the link in the description. It's in my opinion, the best and quickest way to get started setting up a new room when the first thing you need to do is identify that ideal listening position. But yeah, it's super annoying if you set up your new studio and you then find that you've got this massive dip in your low end. I know how frustrating that can be. And unfortunately, the, the, the sad thing is that once you've kind of navigated yourself into that corner, it is really hard to get out. It's so difficult to fix the low end after the fact which is why it's so important to kind of get started by focusing on what matters most first, that is picking that listening position that gives you that balanced low end. Because unfortunately, a sub can help, but it is not a particularly reliable way. And obviously it's way more expensive than just repositioning your setup. So yeah, with that, thanks for watching. Let's get back to trusting our ears and having fun making music in the studio. I'll see you in the next video.